Hey everybody, it's just after 7 p.m. The chickens never took to the water, so I'm gonna try again tomorrow because Michael Farmer just told me to leave the water out there and never go to it. I had left that um, mist and water out there for about two hours and in California, you know they charge for water. So I was like, nah, I'm turning it off. So let me tell you what's going on in the garden today. It's, it's weird stuff, weird stuff. Let me show you. So I came out here, I was over here about to start water and I look this thing this tent was completely off it was all the way on the ground over here so I was like something came in the yard because it's usually it's it gets sometimes windy in my city but it was completely off and the other one was fine so something came in here and knocked it off so let me show you the tomatoes so then I came over to the tomatoes this branch was hanging out and it has tomatoes on it so I don't want to lose it. This branch was hanging off over here and then around here, this branch. So I kind of just stuck them in there. Just kind of went and stuck them in there. And look, my corns are kind of leaning. So something went on between the hours of like four and six or three and six out here. Yeah, some something went down. I don't know what it was. It wasn't loud. It wasn't a human being, I don't think. Yeah. Also, let me show the, the my green, my giant green tomato plant. This plant was knocked all the way down. It wasn't broken, but it was down. So I came and took, um, where's my ties? My little green ties and tied it back up because I do want to get some green tomatoes so you know I'm out here on the weekends anyway I'll be trimming up the um, tomato plants and um, getting them together because I don't want to lose my tomato plants let me show you my lettuce she's looking good you guys there it's looking good the kale is just kind of like huh but look at that lettuce that's butter crunch lettuce it's looking good it's looking good to tell you the truth, I was really concerned about the lettuce because of the heat. Um, and again, today was 107, 108 degrees out here. Today it was hot. Um, those of you who are not familiar with California, everybody thinks it's just the best weather. The best weather in California is at the beaches, literally, because you get the ocean breeze. I am over 80 miles away from the beaches but I'm not in the mountains that shows you how big geographically California is I am what they call the pass area kind of near the desert kind of near the mountain it gets hot but it's still not as hot as the desert if it was 108 out here it might have been like 125 in the desert I could imagine I, I probably need to look up how hot it got it got in Death Valley today I'll let you know um, I'll 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 put it in here. I'm going to look up and see how hot it was in Death Valley today. Um, what else is going on? Let me show you. My loofahs are growing, but that is expected. Loofahs like it hot. They like it hot like okra. Okay, so they're starting to trail. Um, these were laying down, and I just all I do is take them and just kind of wrap them around, and they just take their little ten tentacles or whatever, and they start wrapping. They start growing. Squash plant. Okay, the pumpkins are growing that way, not this way. So it is what it is. Um, I'm having a feeling that these are bush squash plants and not vining, the scallops, because I don't see them vining like the pumpkin. The spaghetti squash is starting to grow in the middle, but look at those leaves. They're doing good, they're doing good. Next, remember my asparagus? They're growing. Look at that, I'll get closer. That's asparagus, ladies and gentlemen. Asparagus lasts 15 to 18 years. So make sure whatever garden bed you put them in, it's gonna be a garden bed for life for them, okay? So they're growing back already. Strawberries doing okay, I gotta cut one off. I gotta cut a couple of them off. That one went bad or something bit it, but it ain't doing good. But I still got strawberries growing. Okay, 
I just saw a hands in the dirt video, Mr. Stacy, and I told him I have to replant okra. Finally, I got one coming up, this little okra plant. She, I don't know what happened to her. But the stem is still green, so we're going to leave her there. But one germinated, one germinated, and I planted six. So we're going to see what happens. I'm going to keep hope alive, keep hope alive, okay? And that's about it. Um, oh, I didn't show you my newest seedlings. I got some more gopher purge plants. I gave one to my neighbor Marcos, and I gotta get some more. I came out here, these were completely dry. So I soak them every night. I got, what kind of mint is this? I got some more mint. This is a kind of mint. Strawberry mint. This is strawberry mint. Okay. And I think the other one is a pineapple. Yeah, this is a pineapple mint right here. I'm going to replace some plants that's, that's in the green stalk with those plants. And this is stevia. I finally found some stevia, and I had actually ordered some more stevia. So the stevia is going to go in their own containers. And that's it. Um, yeah, it's 99 degrees going on 7.30 in the evening. But I expect that in California, that's what you expect. Unless you're near the beach or deep, deep in the mountains where there still might be some snow, it's going to be hot. And I wouldn't want to be in the mountains right now. But it's hot and it's expected to be hot tomorrow. I got to go pick up my glasses. So I got to get out here in the morning, do what I got to do in the yard, see if I can plant some stuff. I did get some, um, a couple of seeds from Baker's Creek. I'll show you. And I might get up and get some soil and um, do what I got to do, get in, get out. I don't want to be out in this yard longer than um, two hours tomorrow just get the hopping on it because it's way too hot every time I came out here to check on the chickens I was like I ain't staying out here and I literally waited to 6 30 to come out here today because I wanted to make sure the yard got shaded so um that's it I'm gonna go in the house show you guys the um seeds I got from Baker's Creek and then I am calling it a day be with you in a second Hey everybody, I'm back in the house. It is, it's a hot one. It's going to be hot tomorrow, we can tell. So, um, before I show you the seeds, I'm going to do another video on the detox. I'm on day 12, so I'll do the video on that. Um, the chickens have not been laying eggs. Like, I've been getting three eggs every couple of days. And with the heat, um, I have... Orpingtons. I had two buff. Now I have one buff and two lavender Orpingtons. And they are cold hardy birds, <clears throat> not heat hardy. As you can see, their feathers are fat and they're not like heat resistant birds. So honestly, usually most birds, when it gets cold, they slow down. But I can see why the birds are slowing down. Because who the heck want to be laying an egg in the heat? It's hot. It's really hot. So I went to the, because I hadn't gone to their coop to look for eggs for a couple of days. And all I got was three. And when I went a couple of days ago, all I got was three. So I'm not really shocked. Once the weather cools down a little bit um, and they get relaxed... I think they're going to start producing more eggs. But right now, I'm not really shocked that they're not um, <clears throat> laying a lot of eggs. It's it's way too hot. I mean, I'm a woman and I have eggs, and we don't even want to menstruate once a month, especially not in no 107 degree heat. No, so um, <clears throat> it's not their diet. I'm doing everything. I'm putting the apple cider vinegar in their water. I'm putting ice out there. They're getting snacks they're doing everything there's um tarps all over the cage so they are really um they have shade 
it's just, it's steaming hot. And I put ice out there and I had to move the mister where there are in order for them to push over to the ice to say, oh, she put ice out here. So tomorrow morning, um, I'm going to put some more ice out there. I'm going to go and buy some more ice. I get these small bags of ice so I could just throw the whole thing of ice. I put, I clean out their water. They have enough everything. They have shade. It's in the shade. It's probably 90 something degrees. It's hot. So them not laying a lot of eggs. I'm, I'm really not, um, really not shocked that they're not. So, okay, let me show you the seeds. So the first one is Coneflower Green Twister. This one right here. Um, it says here, and I'm going to read it, that butterflies, birds, and bees love this drought-tolerant, easy-to-grow perennial. Medicinal benefits with good looks to boot. Okay. Um, start plant 6 to 12 weeks before last spring frost. In containers indoors, keeping moist into sprouts. Appear set out after last frost or direct sow in the garden about two weeks before last frost. I could put... This, this heat is gonna last, the heat is gonna last in California till about October. And I probably say this every year. Um, I notice it gets cool on Halloween. When I was a little girl, before we became Jehovah Witnesses and we celebrated Halloween and I'll be in costume. And I noticed, let me put this up a little bit. I noticed we was out in costume and I would be cold. So we're only in July. Um, Fourth of July is usually not the hottest day of the year, but it's one of the hottest days. Today was hotter than yesterday, but it was hot. It was hot yesterday. It was over 100 yesterday, but it wasn't 108. So I'm probably going to plant these, and these are probably going to germinate, and it's going to be all good. I'm, I'm trying to grow more herbs, a lot more herbs. <clears throat> the next thing is some more artichokes, but not the Glean Globe. These are Artichoke Colorado Red Star. And it says, an easier to grow artichoke Colorado Red Star can be grown as an annual from seed in a wide, a wide range of climates. <clears throat> a one to three foot tall edible ornamental that produces stunning purple tinge globes. It is ideal whenever overwintering. Sow seeds indoors two to three months before average last frost. Transplant to rich, deep, well-drained soil. Seedlings require a chill period, nights below 45 degrees, but above freezing to produce chokes. Okay. The next one, and I got like, um, two packs of each of these seeds. Um, I seen a lady on Instagram who's really homesteading and I'm trying to get to that point where I'm doing, you know, working, but also making my breads and stuff. I got my grain grill, which I haven't been able to. I'm, I'm going to try to um, grind some grains on Sunday. Saturday's a busy day, but I'm going to try to gr um, grind some grains on Sunday. I don't think my mother will be cooking. And Sunday will be day 14 of the detox, so I'll be done. So this is the giant rattle poppy that you can use in bread. Giant rattle poppy, massive blue-green poppy pods are the size of a golf ball, <clears throat> an exotic and intriguing floral design element. Two and a half to three and a half foot tall plants produce delicate Lavender blooms, extra large pods, use fresh or dried, use for bread seed. So that's why I got them. Um, direct sow in late fall. So I'm going to be planting these until fall or in spring as soon as soil can be worked. Surface sow, just barely covering, grows best in cool, 
early spring conditions in rich soil with moderate moisture. So I'll be sowing these in October. The last thing that I've been hearing everybody talk about, and I forgot to order these, but I still may be able to plant them somewhere, is a squash. The North Georgia Candy Roaster. Um, Old Fashioned Heirloom Pink and Blue. Banana shaped fruit to round ten to around ten pounds. Delicious smooth orange flesh. Direct seed or set out transplants after last frost date. Don't let transplants become root round. Don't disturb roots while transplanting. Needs rich soil. Harvest when rinds become very hard. So that is it. Now, when I've been ordering Baker's Creek Seeds, and I kept both of these things here, um, there is going to be a national, it's the 11th National Heirloom Exposition in California. It's going to be in Ventura, California, September 10th through the 12th. And I wonder if they have this nationwide or do people have to fly to California? So I'm wondering if they have it in different states on the same date. And, or do people have to fly here? But I thought I put out that information. It's the World's Pure Food Fair. I think I wanna go. For me, Ventura, it's about over 100 miles away. I actually went out there. Um, before um, I went to Africa for an uh, interview. I didn't get the job, of course, but yeah, I went out there for an interview. I'm looking really tight. I feel like it's something here going on. Put something on my eyes tonight. But I thought that was very interesting. It says they have seat swap, speakers, displays, vendors, contests, and entertainment. I'm thinking about maybe getting a hotel room for those couple of days and me and my mom go up there just have a little trip. She may be bored. She may not want to go. Um, this guy here says, come out, come on out to Ventura and put your toes in the sand. We'll see you at the beach. So Ventura is by, it is a, um, a beach community, a beach, it's a, it's a county, but it also has um, a beach community has a beautiful community college up there and it says you got to get tickets for them so I'm going to look up and see how the tickets are if it says if you want to participate if you're a youtuber or you want to participate in this if you've been getting baker seeds I hope they've been I'm sure they've been sending you one um, email at info at the air loom expo.com so I N F O the at sign T H E H E I R L O O M E X P O dot com. And it says get your tickets at rareseas.com. Also, I just got an email that their catalog is up. So I gotta um, get my catalog. But I'm really, I'm going to see how much the tickets are. And I'm really thinking about going if I have some money. I don't know. Because if I drive up there without a room, that's not going to be good. So, I'm thinking about it. We're in July. That's about three more months away. So, that is it. I just, I didn't get a lot of seeds, but I just wanted to show you what I got. Um... I'm kind of excited about all of these. I'm really excited about the poppies. And like I said, I got two containers or two packets. I hate saying envelopes, but two packets of um, each of the seeds. Um, and I just saw, I was just watching an Instagram and she was like, poppy. And I was like, okay, so that's how you get poppy seeds. You look, the poppy is a very pretty flower, beautiful flower. And, um... I was just kind of excited about that. Um, that shows you I'm a gardener, a true gardener. I'm excited about it. The cone flower, 
I'm going to look that up. And um, let me look at the temperature in Death Valley. Just a moment. Death Valley got up to 125 degrees today. Right now it's 119 degrees. It is 734 at night. That's how hot it got in Death Valley. And people go there to visit. There's no... Let me tell you something. I've been raised in California all my life. Only way I've been through Death Valley is if I, if I had to drive through it. I'm pretty sure I have on the way to Arizona. I ain't going up to Death Valley just to be going and, ooh, take a picture by the sign. What if your car break down? What you gonna do? No, but every year you see people, ooh, it's 100, I think one day it was like 135, 140, and people were out there by the sign, and I'm like, have fun. What if your car break down? there then you're gonna be stuck at death valley i don't think so not your girl no so um yeah i just wanted to show these i'm really excited about the poppy seeds even though i can't plant them to fall the cone flower i'm gonna look up because it is used for medicinal purposes echinacea that's what it is <laughs> it's echinacea so, yeah. Oh, my God. And it says it. Echinacea. Echinacea. That's so why I'm like, I kept saying cornflower. When did I order cornflower? I ordered echinacea. That's what I looked it up as. God, my brain is like a fart in the wind. I'm excited about the artichoke because I got the green, the green globe out there. But I have these. And, um... I may be able to plant some right now. Let me see. So indoors two to three months before average last frost. Transplant to rich soil. Seedlings require chill period. Produce chokes. Sorry, I feel like something's in my ear. I'm just reading. They are frost hardy, hardy. I better wait to till fall. I better wait till fall to um to put these in here. I'm gonna wait. Be before average last frost. Hmm. Might have to wait to spring. We'll see. It says two to three months before. Maybe spring. Because our last, my last frost date is like the end of March. So I'll probably plant them indoors in January. That's probably why the other artichokes didn't come up. I should have read the packet. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to do a separate video now on, sorry, my <laughs> A separate video on how the detox is going. Bye.